Yum, yum! Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and today I'm going to take a look at Animation Composer 2, one of my favorite plugins for After Effects. It is my favorite plugin, or one of my favorite plugins, because it saves me time, and I need my time. I need time to watch Game of Thrones and play Witcher 3 and hang out with my kids and uh, not sleep. So um, I really like Animation Composer 2, and we're all familiar with the effect presets that come with After Effects, right? So we've all used the animated text presets a million times to sort of quickly bring in um, text animations in and out, and... Uh, we all know out of the couple hundred or so that come with After Effects, there's like five good ones, and we've used them a million times, so it's nice to have something else. So Mr. Horse sort of came to the rescue here with, um, and it does things better, in my opinion, than the uh, built-in ones in After Effects, and it does some other things as well. If you go over to their website, you'll see, uh, or at mrhorse.tv, you'll see that you can download it for Windows or Mac, and I believe it's uh, free. You just download it, and the way it works is it installs on your machine, and they've got some presets in there that are, that come with it for free, but the way their business works is then you, you buy content from their store, um, whether that's animation presets or artwork presets, and I'll go through what these are in a minute here. But that's kind of how it works. And so if you if you go back over to uh, After Effects and you take a look at Animation Composer, in fact, it's if you go up here to the window, you'll see Animation Composer up here once you install it. And it's got a couple couple other windows. These are really just utilities. Um, but the main Animation Composer window, I tend to dock over here by effects and presets and, and library and everything. And um, it takes up a decent amount of space. So this is, this is just a 1920 by 1080 window, obviously, uh, recording here. Uh, but you'll appreciate, you know, having a bit larger monitor when you use uh, Animation Composer. Um, so what does it do? Well, there's three different um, sort of categories of effects in an Animation Composer. And the first one is transitions. And transitions, they're not uh, like transitions like you see in a video program like Premiere. They're um, a way to bring text or 2D layers or even 3D layers on and off the screen. So when you're doing motion graphics, you're constantly bringing new elements and text on and off the screen. And these transitions give you a huge variety of options and uh, make it really easy to tweak things. So I'll show you how those work in one second. Um, effects are a little bit different than transitions. Effects actually just apply um, a sort of effect, like a moving effect to a, an image or text. So if we have, let's say, this is some text motion. So if we bring some text onto the screen, instead of it just sitting there, it can bounce around like this, or we can, let's say, let's see, we got some flickery stuff, something like that. Um, so there's there's a little jump ropey thing. There's just a ton of different ones that you can apply to get some motion on your text while it's just sitting there, or, or your, your layers as well. So these are the 2D transforms. You can, um, for instance, add a little bit of an effect to the scale, so you can do something like that, or something more subtle. That's just a little pulse there. Um, but you get the picture, right? And then the third one, uh, pre-comps. And they're just literally pre-comps, right? So you can have uh, titles in lower thirds. Let's see if I have any samples in here. Maybe I do. Um, yeah, so I can have like an entire lower third sample. And of course, you've got the uh, this preview window is just hugely helpful um, because you can iterate through different versions of uh, transition effects for text and, and effects and pre-comps really quickly. And then with the pre-comp, you can well, literally just drag it in your composition. And, and that's where all of this content comes from. So you can get to the store here right from this window. And I really like how Animation Composer is installed. It updates. All, everything comes from this window here. So there's an update. It'll let you know right here. It'll install every, all the plugins from here. You can just drag and drop uh, different kits you buy online right on here. It's just really well thought out and well done. So if you want to buy some more content, let's say some animated icons like these. Let's see what we got here. Um, you know, there's an animated calculator or an animated graph or whatever. There's there's thousands of these things, right? So you can buy them all together. And this is like, what, 70 bucks. That's actually one of the more expensive ones. Or there, you could buy them for just a few bucks each. You know, they're basically microtransactions. So it's like stock footage, um, but it's motion graphics, right? And I, and I like uh, I like how it works. So you can get, you know, whatever. I'll, you know, there's some 
illustrations, there's uh, transitions, there's background elements. You can do some some circles here. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff. And um, you know, circles. Okay, uh, these don't look that impressive, but you know, they're useful, right? So. But the most useful stuff is if you look over here to the motion presets, this is what I bought when I bought uh, or when I downloaded uh, Mr. Horace because I had a project that had a ton of text and a ton of images. And I still have clients who will come in and they'll just they'll dump a PowerPoint on me and say, can you animate this? And, you know, this is uh, Animation Composer is a perfect tool for doing something like animating a PowerPoint because you're just animating on a bunch of text and you're animating on a bunch of still images. And, um, you know, so for whatever it is, I think it's, you know, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, you can uh, uh, have tons of options for doing that. So how does it work? Um, so with the effects and presets that ship with the After Effects, you drag them onto your layer. It's a little different in Animation Composer. With Animation Composer, you select your layer. So I've selected my Pixel Fondue text here. And let's go up to Transitions and see what we got. Let's look at 2D text. And we want we can animate in by words, lines, or characters. And so this is really useful. If you look at, um, let's say, fade in position, and we're looking at animating words. So let's look at basic here. And just over in the preview, you can see what you're going to get. So it's animating in a word at a time and with fade in position, right? And you control these down. You can go from the top, right, bottom. You get the picture, right? So that's words, lines, uh, same thing, but with lines. Here I just have one word, one line, so I want to animate characters, right? So let's look at characters. We have everything from uh, decoding and fading. You can see how they sort of just you know, go through random characters and fade in um, to you know, doing all the transform channels. Here we've got uh, position, rotate, and scale. So they're scaling, moving, and rotating in. That's actually kind of a cool one. So I like this one. Let's say I want to stick with this one right here, right? So I have my pixel fondue text layer selected, and then I just drag over here, and I can apply it as an in or as an out. And you can see up here, that's the in, that's the out. So if I go in, it's now on there, and you can see this little a layer marker has appeared where it says TRN, that's transition in. And if I drag through here, it's going to come in in, in sequence and it's going to be fully in at when it hits that frame marker. So if I want to adjust this, instead of having to go in, if this was animated manually or animated with uh, some of the text animation effects that come in After Effects where you have to start twirling down here and getting into the text options and it's in the range selector and all that, and it gets really sort of confusing, especially when you have to go in and start modifying timing. Here you can modify timing super easily. I just have to drag this in to have it come on faster. Or likewise, I can drag the endpoint on. Now it's going to come on super fast. Boom, right? So it's really that easy. And if I want to do an out, I could find something else to, to play it out. And with text, it doesn't have to be a text transition. It's also a 2D layer. And you can do 3D layers as well. And it'll do all the um, uh, parenting and, and, and pre comping for you. I typically stay away from 3D layer transformations just because After Effects' 3D renderer is so abysmally slow. It sort of takes the whole time-saving thing away from this. But if we go to 2D, let's say I just want to do a simple, say, scale and fade. Fade and scale. Um, something like this where it's just going to scale and fade back and again I just uh, drag that on to my apply is out maybe adjust my duration a little bit and drag through here and you can see it fading and scaling right so it's going to transition on and then it's going to fade and scale off and what's cool is or what else is cool is um, let's see I've got to make sure this uh, end point starts right there with alt bracket there we go um, so I can also do things like uh, I can transform this. So I can move it over here and I can um, scale it up. And I, I'm not going to lose my animation, right? It doesn't affect anything. So I'm able to do transforms on top of this animation that's already there. Just undo that. I can also do things like uh, change you know, the font size. So I can go up to 75. And again, it all just kind of works. I don't have to adjust anything. 
So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's put that back to 50. Um, and then if I want to change, say, let's bring on my uh, little pixel fondue pot here. And like I said, I can I can change the transform so I can move this down and I'm not gonna lose my animation. I can grab both of these and move them up a little bit and turn on my uh, overlay, something like, whoops, something like that maybe, like that maybe. Um, and then, you know, if I want to say I want to change this, if I want it to come in from, maybe I want it to come in from the bottom instead of the left-hand side there. So I go over here to Animation Composer, and I see my in transition, and I can just remove that and go back to my 2D text and animate my character. And what was that? Position, rotate, scale, I think it was. Basic, maybe. Um, maybe it's the second one here. Yeah, maybe it's this one. And we'll say I want it to come in from the bottom, no problem, or bottom left, like that, bottom right, straight up bottom. Oops, there's the bottom. I'll just do the bottom. And again, just drag it in, apply as an in, adjust my endpoint transition there. There we go, pixel fondue coming up. And then I can do the same thing with my logo. Let's say I want to do maybe a... 2D layer transform on the logo. So let's do, how about we do a blur? Uh, rotate and fade, how about rotate and fade? Do something like, a little ease in like that. Maybe some little more. As you sort of go down here, they get a little fancier, right? So we start real simple. And as we go down the list, it's gonna be kind of crazy. I don't think we need that crazy. Or that crazy. That's eh, a pretty good one. Maybe a little more than that. Nah, not that. A little overshoot, maybe. Okay, kind of like that one. So I'm going to drag that in. Okay. I'll match it up to my text. There we go. And we'll do an out. Maybe we'll just do the uh, same out as... You know what? I'll do a rotate out as well. How about a... How about a rotate scale out? Let's see if we can rotate it and shrink it. Kind of like that. Okay, like that. So we'll go boom. Scooch that over. That's our out. Maybe adjust it a little bit since Pixel Fondue is taking its time. Eh, whoops, not that way. This way. Something like that. Okay, so let's try an effect. We have Pixel Fondue here. Let's maybe make it, uh, I don't know, bounce around or something um, during the middle of this animation. So we'll take a look. There's our transitions. Let's take a look at our effects. Uh, let's do a 2D text motion, right? So we can animate the individual characters as they sit there. Maybe do, what do we have? Let's do a, let's take a look at the motion transforms as well. This may be more interesting. Let's, well, let's take a look at a couple of these. Let's do, let's just take a quick look at position. So we can look at position. Okay, that looks kind of boring. Maybe there's a more interesting one. Let's try wiggly. There, that's very wiggly. All the different characters. Maybe something a little less, less wiggly. Less wiggly. Eh, it's all right. Sure, why not? That looks good. So drag this on. And uh, what we can do here right now, if you take a look, as I drag through here, this effect is, is happening throughout the duration of the animation. So as it's transitioning on, it's, it's doing the wiggly. And as it transitions off, it's still doing the wiggly. And what I might want to do is say, okay, let's twirl down my wiggly here and let's add a start point right there. And let me zoom in. You'll see that this says FX in, and this over here's our transition in. So now I've got a, another layer marker to, to set the endpoint of my uh, wiggly motion, right? So we want that to happen right after the transform and it starts wiggling after it comes in. Let me zoom out here. So it comes in, and it starts doing the wiggly, and maybe we'll set an out right here. Stops wiggling, and transforms out. Okay, pretty cool. That's sort of crisscrossing with the logo, so I don't really like it. So if I want to lose it, no problem. I just remove it and pick something else. So let's maybe do a, um, a decode and tracking when that sounds interesting. All right. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Let's do that. So again, let's uh, set an endpoint for that to start. We'll maybe 
right there and then right before it zooms out or uh, transitions out we'll add the out point for the effect so it's pixel fondue comes in does some little kooky and then goes out okay probably not something i'd show a client but you get the idea how easy it is to iterate through this stuff really quickly and find something that you like so we could do the same thing with the logo maybe we could find a little uh, 2d layer transform there's also some uh, warping and for, uh, you know, effects as well. So it's not just transforms. They have some warps and some blurs. Uh, they're kind of cool. Let's see what else they have. Position and scale. Yeah, moving around a little too much. <laughs> there you go. Just a little bit of motion. How about that? All right. So throw that on there with Pixel Fondue. Again, I'm going to um, set an uh, endpoint and an out point for my effect. You can also change the easing here. They've got a drop down. Um, so you kind of have to know your, your easing uh, terminology, but they've got uh, quadratic and cubic and quart and quint, which I don't know what those are, but you can play with them and they should uh, get a preview. Um, the preview should change up here so you can you know, find something that you like. Okay, looks good. Uh, let's do a quick, let's turn on motion blur. Got some motion blur there. Turn off my um, overlays and hit preview and see what this looks like. So there it is. Transition on, effect, transition off. Okay, probably not something I'd show the client, but you get the idea. You can iterate really quickly. Uh, you have a ton of options. You have lots of new content that you can buy and integrate, whether it's lower thirds or transitions or whatever. And it's just a huge time saver. If your time is valuable and you'd rather be playing video games or watching Netflix, uh, I really suggest heading over to MrHorse.tv and buying, uh, actually just download Animation Composer for free and then buy some of the content. That's it. Yum, yum.